Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Um, I am Executive Director of Environmental Health Trust. We are a scientific think tank that publishes research, we brief policymakers, and we also create educational campaigns about radiofrequency radiation and electromagnetic fields. Um, you can go on to our website and you can learn more about us. Our scientific advisors are considered some of the top experts in the world. Dr. Anthony Miller is the former um, Director of Epidemiology at the National Cancer Institute of Canada. He was a uh, senior epidemiologist for the International Agency for the Research on Cancer of the World Health Organization. And he, along with um, other experts in our organization and others, have penned, he has over 600 publications. But one of this most recent one is about radio frequency, stating that it is a human carcinogen. The combined evidence, in my view, is that there is now sufficient evidence that radio frequency radiation is carcinogenic to humans. That's IR category one, and you can't ignore that. And we know that although the risk per individual is low, the radiation is widely distributed. I was astounded when I went up one of your peaks to find a cell tower at the top of the tram. My goodness, what are they doing to people? And when we continue doing this, this could result in major public health problems. Dr. Ronald Melnick is a 28-year National Institutes of Health scientist, uh, now retired, who uh, helped to design, he actually led the design on the NIH study, the $30 million NIH study that found clear evidence of cancer, of which right now um, it's being said that, well, uh, if you read that, well, humans are not animals, so it doesn't apply. However, if you listen to him speak, and he's been speaking around the world on this, he says, well, actually, there is important utility in this. It was designed to see if the basis for the limits, the laws that the U.S. government has, are actually um, based on a true assumption that low levels can't cause harm, that non-thermal levels can, and they did find effects. What does the public need to know? There have been multiple studies have found increases in cancer associated with exposure to radiofrequency radiation. This is animals and humans. Because of the widespread use of cell phones, even a small increase in cancer risk would have a serious public health impact. I th strongly feel precautionary principles should be promoted by health and regulatory agencies, especially for children and pregnant women. The, the, the agencies in the U.S. say, if you are concerned, that puts the burden on the individual. It doesn't say, we are concerned. It, it should be very straightforward. Precautionary principles should be promoted. Because, as mentioned earlier, risk can be greater for children than adults due to the increased penetration of the radiation within brains of children, and the developing nervous system is more susceptible to tissue-damaging agents. So finally, uh, what is the lesson that should be learned? When dealing with assumptions, uh, I think we've shown that assumptions, in this case, can be wrong so that we should no longer assume that any current or future wireless technology, including 5G, is safe without adequate testing. Thank you. So um, there's a lot I can tell you. I'm also, I live in Montgomery County. I used to live in Prince George's County. And I, for years, and I mean years, worked on trying to get the school system to address the lead in the water. It was my work that led to them addressing it because I did a, a public information request and found that they'd neglected the issue for years. And what I was told at first is that, well, finally, when it was addressed because we had a news story that was done, if you saw the, um, the news stories that have been done on this going back a few years ago, that, well, EPA limits are met. Well, the EPA limit uh, was outdated. It's not even a health standard. So as you think about this issue, just think about history. When has the government's laws been, when have they been at the forefront of protecting people? I mean, just think about that. Um, 
I also want to add something about some of the conversation that's been said before, and that is that all these benefits that are being addressed can be done with wired technology. You can get time of use. There are cities in California that have banned smart meters. There are cities in other countries that are not allowing the use of wireless meters because they want it to be safe. They want it to be wired. So you can get that time of use. I, being someone who had a major mold problem in my house, can talk to you all about mold. Um, and I can also tell you that there's research showing that electromagnetic fields, when combined with mold and other bacteria, has been shown to affect their growth. This is a whole world of research. It's on our website on ehtrust.org. Um, so uh, I wanted to make sure that you had, I, I'm handing out uh, information for everyone. One is the Baby Safe Project, which has been signed on to by several hundred, hundred scientists, doctors, and educators, recommending among, among the many recommendations that you sleep as far away from a smart meter as possible. Um, and Dr. Hugh Taylor, the chief of obstetrics at Yale, whose research found that mice exposed to radio frequency developed damaged memory and more hyperactivity, is a signatory and spoke at the press conference in New York, of which I was there. And I will tell you something. The issue of the impacts to brain is what is being neglected in any discussion you see. We can talk about cancer, and the scientists who I work with believe that this radiation causes cancer. Um, however, the impacts to the brain and reproduction have, uh, there are so many uh, studies that have found effects at very, very low levels. This was spoken to briefly in the report, um, and yet it's so important. So not only that, but effects at very low levels. I'm talking about extremely low levels when in combination with a known carcinogen, then result in higher impact. So in other words, it's the combination. We all live in a combination of environmental exposures, um, and, and research has shown an impact to the blood-brain barrier. That means there can be more toxins that will get to the brain. So I, I talked about how there are wired solutions. Frankly, an opt-out is not good enough. It should be wired for everyone. And you know, what is popular, what everyone is doing, is not necessarily the right thing. In Washington, D.C., for example, they're pushing forward 5G. The people are told they don't even have a say. And I was at the eight-hour hearing where there were residents after residents talking about, uh, you know, talking about their health and what is going on. How can this be pushed through? And the people of D.C. are being told that they have no choice because D.C. is a test city for 5G. I also wanted to point out uh, a couple other. I could talk all about the science if you have questions. I hope you'll ask me a question because I'm here and I can um, speak to some questions that you may have on that. But I'd like to point out the issue of a environmental review which needs to be done. And it should be not only about the, uh, the, 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 health, the, the health impacts from radio frequency, but what about all of this uh, new electronics what about e-waste? What about the impacts in terms of conflict minerals? There are children who are mining the raw minerals used in all of these electronics. They are made to break. You probably have a meter, maybe, on your home, uh, which has been lasting decades. But all of the new technology has a very short lifespan. And there's actually a lot of energy uh, and, uh, frankly, blood uh, of people that goes into the making of the devices. As an example, uh, there are cases where all of these young workers, often uh, young women, who are making the electronic boards are developing leukemia at very young ages because of the toxic chemicals used in their manufacture. Um, I think the estimates are six million people have died um, in, the, um, in, in wars fueled by conflict minerals. There's also energy use, which is not only with the meter itself, the cloud computing, every aspect of it needs to be addressed. There are um, climate change groups that are writing, saying we have to reduce our use of digital technology in order to, um, to, to address the energy consumption issues. And 
I just think we have to be prudent. Then there's the issue of how will it, well, how will it be uh, recycled? There is no health agency, uh, there is no environmental agency that has looked at the impacts to birds, bees, and trees. And that's just flat out a fact. And if you can find an evaluation by any health agency on the impacts to birds, bees, trees, and, and there's it's also, if you go on our website, um, what we do is we link to the published science. So you can see research that shows impacts to trees from long-term exposure, uh, impacts to bees. Um, there's so much out there, but what we don't have is a health authority or an environmental authority, because the EPA was defunded on this, that's actually uh, taking a good look. And, and we should be taking a good look. So I ask that you, that you do uh, the right thing and think about uh, the future and children, wildlife, and the environment. Um, because I can't imagine thinking that, uh, saying we have to weigh the costs and benefits. I think that if there is a health issue or an impact to our environment, that it, it must be top of mind. And I'd love to answer any questions. I have one. If you could take a minute. Um, you mentioned, I heard you mention uh, that D.C. is a test city for 5G. What, how so? For, uh, did you mean for the meters or just? This is for the um, 5G is connecting the Internet of Things of which the meters is all a part of all of these wireless devices. And we believe soon to be even more a part of this whole uh, infrastructure. So 5G is going to mean, according to the FCC, 800,000 new mini short uh, cell towers that are all going to be connected for machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication, as well as our phone connecting with all kinds of wireless entities. And what happened was the city signed agreements with various carriers. There wasn't transparency as far as I know in this, there wasn't a place for people to even weigh in on this issue. And then the meetings that I'm talking about have gone on because they're having discussions about the design and what it will look like. Because just imagine that on every block you can have several new cell towers, only they're short, like on your street light or on uh, buildings to connect the new 5G technology. So uh, Washington, D.C. is one of many test cities, and um, I, have, I have information about 5G if you're interested. I will tell you that there are, uh, as, as was discussed earlier, there are cities in, in California where they are uh, prohibiting them in right of way. In Italy, there are 152 cities where the elected officials have signed stop uh, more resolutions to halt 5G. And that's because one of their largest, just like we have the NIH NTP, National Toxicology Programs, in, um, in the United States, Italy has the Ramazzini Institute. There, they did an animal study that found the same tumors as NIH did, but at uh, radiation levels which were far lower and actually within FCC limits. Because FCC limits were not based on long-term exposure, low-level long-term exposure. So I will, this, this will um, yeah, you give could. you a little bit of information. But you can go and watch, um, I think it was Councilwoman Che had a hearing, and please watch it. I mean, what was amazing was the concern, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word concern because it's, it's not a concern, it's a reality, the impact to the, to the trees. There were groups from all over talking about the trees and how will it affect the trees. All right. Okay. Thank you for that. I just needed to um, get your clarification on that. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I uh, have a question, Mr. Biden. Chair. Uh, let me ask you something. Uh, so according to your uh, studies and research, can you uh, categorically say that this meter, uh, uh, there is no uh, conclusive evidence that they cause uh, hazard to humans. Um, I think that our science would say it is confirmed that it is a human carcinogen. And not only that, there is uh, adequate research showing impacts in scientific studies at low levels 
that are lower than we have allowable limits and there are effects found at lower levels. So there are biological effects and other effects um, at levels below what is legal. So um, th that is what I would say. And, and that if there, are, if there are effects shown, and there are various ones, and yes, there always needs to be more research. The scientists are always, they want to know how does it do it this way and we you know how, how do we, like the American Cancer Society just came out with a study that I would point you to. This is a Yale study and they looked at cell phone use and thyroid cancer and they found when they first, they did two studies actually, the first study they found kind of a suggestion but, well, you know, thyroid cancer is skyrocketing but when they took the people who developed cancer, thyroid cancer, and they looked at uh, genetic their genetic makeup, they found that there were a certain group of people and they identified the certain SNPs, a, a genetic susceptibility, which, which then, when they ran the numbers, really showed um, a connection. So that makes sense because not everyone gets cancer who's exposed to the same thing. Um, there's a lot to sort out. I would say this, there are hundreds of scientists who are saying we must reduce exposure to this because we know that um, there are effects at lower levels. Still more we can learn, but how, but, you know, that, that's, that doesn't mean we don't take action. I mean, are you going to wait until it's proven? Because that means dead bodies. That's how we decide things are proven, by the more dead bodies in studies. About people are statistics. So. Yeah, but you say that there are other environmental uh, issues that may affect you know, a uh, human. That is not only the radiation that might be hazardous, hazardous to your earth, but uh, other uh, environmental factors, right? Yes. A combination of those. Yes, I mean, there are many environmental, and when the government studies and sets limits for things, they often look at studies where only one agent, one toxic thing is being studied. But we're all exposed to so many things all the time, and in combination, it adds up, and they can have a synergistic effect. You know how you're not supposed to mix alcohol with Valium because the effect is more than 1 plus 1 does not equal 2. 1 plus 1 can equal 10 because it, the way they affect the body. So these are all um, critical issues. And there was a study done uh, that, that looked at animals, and they exposed them to very low levels of radio frequency, and then a known carcinogen, and the tumors in the, um, this is Lurkel, uh, in the, the ones who were exposed to both were far higher than when they were exposed to just the, the carcinogen. I mean, what I would expect is for our government or governments to adequately study this issue, but we are not funding research into this. In fact, the two studies that we have funded have found effects, and we are, uh, and we have, they have been discounted um, by, by various uh, groups uh, which are, are considered authorities but are actually quite industry loyal and industry connected. There's a Harvard, uh, Harvard uh, book by Norm Alster, it's an investigation into this that found that the telecommunications companies' actions are comparable to big tobacco. And it goes over all the money involved. And it's just like with tobacco or asbestos or lead. This is about money and power and not protecting public health. You can do this wired. Why not have a wired infrastructure? Um, why not do a, an environmental review that looks at every aspect? I mean, I, you've gone this far with a health evaluation, unfortunately, PRI is, is, a, um, is an industry uh, consultant group. So I'm hoping you will do an environmental review with independent experts. Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you.